Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I thought I would review the SPY here today. It's a Saturday afternoon, and sometimes I get a really good read on what's going on here and stuff during the weekend. So we did not break below from Thursday in the SPY. Interesting. The SPY is definitely stronger than the QQQs as far as looking at both these ETFs, which is the ones I focus on. I really expected us to gap up here or follow through immediately on the day from Thursday because the drop-off bounced so aggressively and so huge and so much buying came in on the day on Thursday on the 16th that I felt that we would follow through somewhere on Friday higher. We didn't. We gapped down. We gapped down and we fell and then closed I wouldn't say we closed weak, but this isn't a strong close like on Thursday. It's more neutral. So I think Monday's gonna be, uh, and really this whole week, this upcoming week is gonna be a big test for the market to see where we go next. It is stronger for the market if we just follow through higher here. If we pull all the way down to this area here, I have no idea the timing when we will get up over the high. We will still make a brand new all-time high once again in the SPY which we haven't done this year. When we did it, it was more than a year ago. It was May of 2015. And I thought we would have done it by now. We got so close here. Then we pulled in, and then we looked like we we're gonna fall through right here. We didn't do it. So reading these gaps in the market, one of the very interesting things is that there's not been any follow through to the downside. There has been follow through to the upside. And we haven't gotten over the high, but there's definitely been more follow through to the upside here than to the downside. However, when people read trends and pivots, which people often do that trade the market or study technical analysis or look at charting patterns, people are reading this as a series of lower highs and lower lows in the market or even tops. The fact that we broke this area in here doesn't really have any meaning. It doesn't mean we're gonna fall the way down here. And even if we do, and we fall all the way down and make a recent low in here, it doesn't mean we're still not going to get all the way up over the top. But I do think that this week is a significant week for the market to see if we follow through here right away into this support area and rally up again. One thing that is interesting though, looking at all the areas we keep making here, the next time we go up here, I have a 100% I have a conviction we're going to get over it. We've retested this now so many times. If we're gonna do it, we need to just get right on over it the next time we go up and around. But I don't know when, and that's why I'm saying this week will be very telling for the market, how we open on Monday morning and how we got. This is Melissa Arma with a Stock Swoosh, and if you'd like more information on how to read gaps in ETFs or stocks, email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. The next Golden Gap class is June 25th and 26th. If you want to learn how to trade gaps during an earnings season, it starts in July, and there's going to be a lot of good trades in July and August. People think typically the summer is a slow month, but not if you trade gaps like me. It's actually third quarter earnings season reports come out, and so it's a busy time to trade. I'm not trading all day. I never do, but I trade in the morning quickly, and that is the time to make money uh, in the summer. Have a great day, everyone, and email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you'd like more information.